Yay, so we're not playing Mike in the first round, which is always nice. We're playing against Prophet MJ. Hello and good luck to Prophet MJ. Do I want to play first? Yes, I do, even though, yeah, I'm looking to go late game. I also just don't want to get blown out early on. It's actually a pretty fine hand with a two drop, removal spells, and then a three drop and such. So we'll go ahead and not mulligan. Keep this draw. And uh, yeah, get the game on. Alrighty. What color shall we see here? Oh, some blue, some, some blue, right. Great. So we might just want to play this aggressive game here. Remove whatever my opponent plays. With a magma jet. Ooh, especially on this control level. Vaporkin. Hmm. I'm not too sure yet how much I care about Vaporkin. I th I think I'm much more comfortable with playing out my, um, my Spear Point Oriad and then start getting the race on, because Vaporkin can't block on the ground. And then we'll save our removal spells for, you know, a two for one or, or something if we're lucky. There's a, yeah, like with the ordeal, cool. That will be great. We'll go ahead and magma jet that buddy boy. Take our three and then be in a pretty good position. What do we got here? Uh, not the end of the world, though also not the best thing in the world. We'll go ahead and magma jet first. I'm not anticipating any other... Um, we're going to put both these on the bottom. We're going to start drawing action before we draw lands. I'm not anticipating my opponent putting any more on the Vaporkin in case uh, there is, you know, something. I just, there would be, I'm not going to get a, a third card out of the deal anyway, so I'd rather use the Magma Jet to avoid any sort of shenanigans with an untapped pound, like the random regenerate one month, one swamp thing. All right, there goes the last breath on our Spear Point, which is actually okay. Interesting. Wants to care about First Strike more than Heroic. All right, looks like just trying to stay alive for my fun. Ooh, now I would like that that land. That's fine. We're okay right now. I mean, this arena athlete might just do the trick here. My opponent's playing three colors. Not entirely sure for what, but we can lightning strike a card that comes down. We'll have titan strength to get out another blocker. The sea monster. Okay. So that will be an issue. But not yet. Certainly would be grand if uh, I could get rid of this sea lock monster. One more land gets us there. Two more lands will get us another removal spell. Here's the Battlewise Hoplite. I'm sure that will take a lightning strike, probably in response to uh, to something. So I'm thinking now I'm going to go ahead and Titan Strength the Arena Athlete, attack in um, with both, just seven damage, and it keeps up this lightning strike to maybe try to get a two for one against the Battlewise Hoplite. I probably wouldn't do that if I didn't have my backup sip of Hemlock for later. I could play the Insatiable Harpy, but what I don't want to do is keep uh, is have myself open to... Uh... Yeah, I really want Lightning Strike to take out the Battlewise Hoplite for some reason. If my opponent does a Hoplite block on the Arena Athlete, do I like that? I don't think I do. But I'm going to offer it right now, just because we have such great things. And I can still do the Lightning Strike. And this might even beat out a block plus, like, something. Ooh, the Emissary? Yeah. We'll take that. Thank you. My opponent does do a block. 
I'm not going to lightning strike the hot plate unless my opponent like pumps it somehow with like a train tactics or whatever. Instead, I'll let the trade happen, then play the harpy. I'm actually very okay with that. Okay, so my opponent did do that. And that's because we have that, um... Which, which emissary? Uh, Porphyros' emissary coming up next. That I was willing to do that. Could we allow to maintain our pressure? I'm trying to decide, maybe I just hang on to uh, my emissary, try to get up to the, the manas, to the manas. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait. I like having lightning strike up right now. I'm winning the air with the insatiable harpy. And I think it's going to be more relevant to have this instance be real. I draw one more land, I start kind of going off, so that'd be cool. Let's see, the Horizon Scholar. Okay. That does help my opponent out quite a bit. Now I definitely just want to land. My opponent might be wanting some land as well. and found something. Two cards. That Prophet MJ is stoked to have. Alright, come on, now we want our lands. Let's go lands. Land! Well, that is so not a land. Um, I'm still gonna hang on to this because I'm gonna play the, uh, the Minotaur now and keep a lightning strike up. We start taking a little bit of damage, but we're so far ahead of the race, it's not like my opponent could be attacking with Horizon Scholar. And I'm even okay if my opponent wants to monstrosity, waste a turn, and then I block with Keepsake Gorgon. It loses the removal spell, but with our backup removal spells, we're in pretty good shape. So what are these cards? I could have been on the aggressive side of this, um, since I'm okay with a trade if it has to happen, but I'm more interested in my opponent wasting a turn and then trading. Um, but, you know, since I'm so far on the uh, the winning side of this, attacking with Keepsake Gorgon, there's an argument. Could just be a chump or something. Observant Ulsad. Alright, so... I'm going to start doing some major beatdowns. Again, still happy because one land, which will eventually happen before it becomes critical, will be able to... Uh, take out that Scholar. Bummer though, because I was betting on that lack of attack because I'm going to be able to crack back with Insatiable Harpy. But, hey, that's a good card, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, one away. Still going to do it, of course. Um, and then my opponent will understand why such nasty things are existing. Can't attack him with everybody yet, but we're close. Super close. Alright, 18 land deck. I really want to cast a sip of hemlock now. Naturally. Time to make dreams come true. Mm, okay, so my opponent can gain some life here. He might need to throw away. I mean, would you attack in with the hopeful Adalon to throw it away just to gain four life? Mm, nope, so we win. Okay, that's nice. Latin strike. Boink. My opponent conceded from the game instead of clicking OK. I guess that works. 
Ooh, and with rescue and disciple and such. Yeah, that was cool. Not too sure what the black is being splashed for. We just saw the blue-white action. Oh, no, wait, we saw the Adalon. That's weird. So I'm just playing random sort of um, three color. Is there anything I want to change out? We did see one black creature. It was just the Intimidate dude. Not too sure if it's worth it for the Dark Betrayal to come in. If we saw that black was more of a base color, I would, but it looks like uh, red, uh, blah, 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 blah. if I can speak, that would be cool. Blue and white are the more base colors with a black splash. Hmm. Don't think Magma Jet is at its finest here, because I might even pull out a Magma Jet. Really like the sip of Hemlock because of the big flying dudes. We have ways to deal with all of that, though. I still like the Grey Merchant plan because it looks like my opponent is trying to go a little bit slower. And even though our first journey athlete did a lot of work because my opponent was kind of like on the back foot, it's going to be a lot more interesting to have the Grey Merchant game plan online. Something here I'm really stoked to bring in. Portent of Betrayal could be good. But rather have that or Magma Jet? Nah, I think we're going to keep it this way. Okay, I'm going to keep this. Um, it's a slow start, but we have a Magma Jet to remove an early threat like the Vaporkin or something. And then the Grey Merchant will be on turn. Hopefully we'll get a, uh, you know, a, th <laughs> a three or four drop beforehand. My opponent mulled down to six and does have a arguably aggressive start. I don't think the Adalon's a big deal, though. We'll save this Magma Jet to remove it when uh, you know something gets put on top of it, like an enchantment. Not an ordeal, so that's good. That would have been bad initially. But if my opponent wants to try to bestow or ordeal it, then we'll, we'll do Magma Jet in response. Especially because this scry is going to be nice. Now that we have all the lands we need, we can just get, get some action on the top of our library, which will be very cool. Could arguably Magma Jet now, since I kind of want to do it at the end of turn anyway, but I think it's too valuable. Yes, I would love to scry. But we probably won't draw an oh, we did draw another land. So sad. Oh, so sad. Alright, well, we'll just keep taking our beats here and pray that Magma Jet gets a value besides just scrying. Just need another creature. But I'm getting pinged away here. My opponent's gaining life. Wow. So we're both bored? Is that what's happening? Well, at least I have a way to start blocking now. My opponent can counter return phalanx. I'm A-OK -okay with that. But my opponent did not counter. What you got? Bestow? No, burnish chart. That's also OK. Even though, yeah, it allows my opponent to get the black. That, you know, helps with the splash. Not something I'm overly caring about. Hmm, emissary is good. How greedy am I about this gray merchant? I think I'm pretty greedy. There's no discard my opponent's playing. I could play the uh, Porphyrosis Emissary now. But again, I'd rather just wait and since, believe it or not, in red black, I'm in a control build right now. I'd rather wait until I can have it play next turn along with Magma Jet. And who knows, maybe I'll draw something else and I'll just end up bestowing the Emissary. My opponent's doing nothing. And if that continues, then we're in good shape. And we're in good shape right now. Ooh, and a Hoppy. That's great. That's definitely the guy I want to bust down. Cool. Now we can start getting our beats on. My opponent's going to search for a bunch of land. Last breath. You know what? I'm going to go with Titan Strength because I really like this Harpy here. And um, also Scrying is kind of cool. It means I don't get my Magma Jet. I do not need you anymore. You are on the bottom. Worries me that I might end up grabbing a land, but whatevs.
kind of gets a bunch more lands as well. Yep, there's a swamp. I do love the idea of making my insatiable heart be a 5 5 flying lifelink thanks to Perforosa's Emissary, and can only be blocked by two or more creatures. Because that's going to be hard to deal with. Alright, so things I'm starting to care about. Sea God's Revenge, or any kind of bounce, really. Don't have a lot of pressure on my opponent yet, but still. But scary things can happen here. Such as... A Catherine Lampid. That I'm not as worried about. Yeah, now that it's out of range um, of my Magma Jet, it's a 3-3, but the fact that I can block it a whole bunch is fine by me. Ooh, but now the ordeal comes down. Okay. Okay. A bit of a race situation, because now there's a 4-4 four, four online. I will just go ahead and take it. Three, four, five. Same time, I could just... I don't want my opponent drawing cards. I guess I could sacrifice my Harpy now. But I'll be able to play the Great Merchant next turn, do a double block, and yeah, my opponent won't get it. So It is four life, but I think the Harpy is significant enough. And it is kind of cool that I can also keep up um, the Magma Jet again, even though that seems to be increasingly irrelevant. Do a bunch of damage. Get a bunch of life. We're back on even playing fields, turn 20. Though my opponent does have a pretty sweet situation here. I will happily do a double block. Oh wait, Intimidate on white. I always think it's Intimidate on on that. I can't block. So yeah, ignore me. I'm being silly. Now I am a little bit worried. For sure need to um, emissary up the Insatiable Harpy so that I can be uh, racing. Is that Ooh! Looks like we're going to get uh, controlled out here. I mean, the uh, Magma Jet does nothing at this point. I play the Insatiable Harpy for blocks, basically. Because if I were to attack for five, then I'm getting huge hits back. I'll go ahead and attack with the Grey Merchant, see what happens. Counterspell? Yay, no counterspell. Alright, so we have a little bit of defense now. Still taking this huge hit, and my opponent's going to be drawing cards, so... All because I didn't keep my Magma Jet up for the hopeful Eidolon. Of course. Should have done it when I had a chance. Still can't block. My opponent has tons of cards in hand. Steed Rider. Yeah, probably just gonna Magma Jet it. Be in the next turn. Wish I could do it at the end of this turn so I could do the Scry before my draw step, but alas. Well, this is cool about having the Spear Point Oriad because uh, of the first strike.
so if I were to first strike up my Grey Merchant, right, uh, in order to be attacking in for four, that seems pretty okay. I still need to be able to draw something relevant sooner rather than later, but I don't... This guy right now is kind of okay, so I think that's what I have to do. Next turn, I'm going to have to attack him with the Heartbeat to gain life, right? And here, I have to pray my opponent makes dumb blocks, which doesn't happen, which is smart. Oh. I'm magma jetting now, for sure. If my opponent has some sort of combat trick on the Wingsteed Rider, that's very bad for me, but I think if I'm going to barely win this game, I need to draw my removal spell really quickly and uh, hope that my opponent doesn't have anything super awesome in the action department. Because I'm going down to one here. Let's see if my opponent attacks everything, though I don't think my opponent will. But could get greedy. Try to go for it here. Yeah, my opponent just hanging out. Okay. Ouch. We'll get rid of the Wingsteed Rider, hopefully. Scry to make sure we can dig for an answer. What you got? Sea Lock Monster. That is definitely bad. It's just a whole lot more pressure. Ooh, okay. Does Grey Merchant do anything important? One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Puts me back up to ten. But I'm still in a really tough spot. <sighs> and then I have to draw another spell? I think I need to get my Sip of Hemlock online. Even if I do that and I kill the Hopeful Adalon, sorry for the delay here, but if I do kill the Hopeful Adalon... I think I can survive. I think I can. Unfortunately, it's going on the bottom. I think the only way I win this game is by removing this Adalon. Well, of course it's the only way, because if I don't remove it next turn, then I'm just screwed. Alright, and that ain't it. So I have to attack in with the, uh, our life linker here, which could be blocked, traded. But even if I don't, that's still six, seven, eight. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and concede here. Get the time. We can't get there. Ooh, I forgot about Cerberus. Ooh, I hope we can get Cerberus online. All right. My opponent's black creature, though it did ascend a wee bit, um, I still don't think it's worth bringing the Dark Betrayal. We do have a target for Spark Jolt, but I think I prefer the rest of my spells over it. Yeah, I like the deck how it is. Let's maintain this, and yes, play first. Ooh. Looking good. We need to draw a Swamp, but we got a bunch of those. And again, we have a Magma Jet for early action. Alrighty. No quick starts, please. Thank you. Thank you for listening. That is very cool of you. Next few turns, we're not going to have mana up for magma jetting, so I might just kill a Vaporkin or something that comes down. Even though it's so nice. Maybe I do keep it for value because of the Flame Speaker Adept, and I don't care about Vaporkin. No, I want to scry. Ooh. Definitely putting you on the bottom, even though you're a great card. And then... Do I care about a Scourge Mark? Yeah, we'll put it on top. I think you can do some work. As long as I like the nut card, but... Should be fine. Do you want to draw that swamp? That's what I would have preferred to have, but 
I think the scourge mark's okay. The Nyad! Ooh, and an arena athlete. Well, I think we're going to scourge mark up our flame speaker adept. See if we can't draw that next land instead of the ordeal, because I want to draw a land and maybe get the arena athlete down. That would be cool. Land? Not a land. Oh well. Alright, my opponent is off of white mana at the moment. And the ordeal comes down. Definitely want lands for this sip of hemlock to happen. Click, click, come on, here we go. Finds two mana up. Hey, lightning strike. Obviously, using it here. Is there a pump or anything? My opponent has trying tactics. My opponent has trying tactics one way or another. Give my opponent an extra draw step, but I might even get even more of a blowout here. My opponent may not think that I actually have something. Please resolve. Oh, please resolve. I want you to resolve so badly. Yay, you resolved! <laughs> Woohoo! Alright. Hanging in there. Just need some land. Come on, land. What's the follow-up? Your unicorn? I don't care about your stinking unicorn. Although it helps the white happen. Land. Swamp. Specifically a swamp. Really want a swamp right now. Not a titan strength. Alright, do I get a return phalanx out, an arena athlete, or get this ordeal kicking off? It's nice that the ordeal can start doing some damage, though. Kind of like playing out the arena athlete, putting it on, getting more pressure against my opponent. Yeah, I think that's going to be better. Especially now that we have the titan strength, the arena athlete has... Um, a lot more value. I think we can start bashing in for a bunch. Because next turn we'll go ahead and ordeal up the arena athlete, take out whatever my opponent plays here. Such as the Chimera. Then we'll do it again with Titan Strength after that. Go cool. And hopefully draw lands by then. Again for six. What else you got? Please no lifelink. That's what would be a bummer. Certainly not tapping out for lifelink mana at the moment. Horizon Scholar. Okay. So we gotta kill the Chimera, right? Because we're gonna Titan Strength up the Rain Athlete, tap out this Horizon Scholar. I say tap out, uh, make it so it can't block. This will become a 6 3, but actually a 7 4 attack in. This has to be blocked, but so the Chimera is gonna chump, and then the Flame Speaker Adept will do 3. This will be very good. Hopefully there's no land here to confuse me with a possible trick, and there is not. Hey, we got our swamp, so that'll be good for a follow-up if, for some reason, dreams do not come true here. Mm. 
You are... Hmm. We'll put you on top, because I think I do want you for the... If for, again, if for some reason I can't get through this, um, I do want to have lands for the, uh, the Sip of Hemlock. Oh, I forgot that Flamesweaker Edup got plus two plus zero. Wasn't even aware. Hey, GG's. Sorry to slow roll you on my decision of <laughs> what to put on top. Oh, and Cerberus. That's cool. Great. We'll see you in the next rounds, gingos.